You often hear people say that they cannot live without their phone, or they cannot live without coffee or a, a microwave, and most of the time these people are exaggerating, it's a, a figure of speech, but when I say that I cannot live without these art supplies, I'm not exaggerating. If I didn't have these supplies, I wouldn't be able to create art, which means I wouldn't be able to earn any money, which means I wouldn't be able to afford any food, which means I would starve and die. So in this video I'm going to list all of the art supplies that I used to create artwork. If you watch a lot of my videos, you will be familiar with the Kurutoga mechanical pencil. I am always drawing with this, and I have been using it for years. In fact, I think I've always been using the same one. All I have to do is replace the lead. I use some Pentel 2B lead with this, which is a grade that allows me to create a wide range of shades when drawing. Why do I use this mechanical pencil over all of the rest that are out there? Well, it's all I've really used. I remember doing some research and deciding that this is the one to go for, and since I have been using it, I have never really felt the need to try anything else. In terms of quality and reliability, this is a great mechanical pencil. This is the metallic edition, I think that Uniball has recently started producing these with a plastic barrel and a slightly different design. I can't speak too much about them though because I have yet to try them. One of the main selling points for the Kurutoga is the lead rotation mechanism that continually rotates the pencil lead as you use it. Now this is meant to ensure that it's always sharp, meaning that you will create a fine and consistent line. This avoids the problem which is common with most mechanical pencils, where when you use it, the lead wears down on one side, and it forms a slanted wedge-shaped tip. And that's not very practical when it comes to drawing because there is this inconsistency with the shape of the lead, which will likely result in varying line thicknesses. And so that's something you have a higher chance of avoiding with this Kurutoga. Another reason why I use this to create most of my drawings is because of the convenience of not having to sharpen or replace this. Of course, every so often I have to refill the lead, but this is my go-to. Watch any of my videos and I guarantee you will see me using this. Now can we please put an end to those what pencil do you use comments. I've tried a lot of different pencils over the time that I've been drawing, and I always find myself purchasing these Faber-Castells. Like with most pencils, there is a wide selection of different grades. If you want to know more about pencil grades, then I made a video explaining everything there is to know. When I create a drawing, I mostly use the softer pencils, ranging from 4B to 8B. I rarely use the harder pencils because when I am drawing, I am usually working with the mechanical pencil. I use these softer Faber Castells to darken parts of the drawing and so I recently purchased a pack of 10 6B pencils because I go through these quickly, especially when I am sharpening them frequently. I find that Faber Castell pencils are good quality and you can always rely on these to get the job done. Another good brand is Derwent, I used to use them a lot as well. It's really worth investing in some good quality pencils because I find that the cheaper ones tend to feel like plastic and when you put them on paper you can really notice the difference in performance. Now this is likely the most useful tool that I use when drawing, the Tombow Monozero Eraser. This is a refillable eraser pen with a fine point for very precise and neat erasing. Have you ever intended on erasing only a small mistake when drawing but as you put your eraser to the paper, it results in you erasing a lot more than you wanted to? Well you do not have to worry about that anymore. It, it sounds like I'm doing some typical advertisement here, but anyways yeah, the Mono Zero Eraser it allows you to be very accurate when erasing. It's perfect when you are drawing in detail. This eraser is available with two differently formed tips, including the round tip and the rectangular tip. These are also refillable, and I find that I am often replacing these erasers because I make, uh, I make a lot of mistakes. But one mistake I didn't make was when I started to use these. I mostly used the round tip, but when I went to Japan this year, I purchased a rectangular one with a metal body. I'm sure that either of them will prove to be very convenient when drawing, so I highly recommend getting one of these. 
I started using these rulers when I was studying architecture and I've continued to use them when I create artwork. It's always good to have a ruler nearby. Who knows when you'll need to draw a straight line or measure something out. This ruler is made using professional grade aluminium to prevent flexing and warping. It also includes six commonly used metric scales. It's very good quality and I can't tell you how many times I find myself needing to use this. When it comes to sharpening pencils, I have one intention, getting the pencil sharp. I have this Faber-Castell Trio sharpener which enables you to sharpen graphite pencils, coloured pencils and jumbo sized pencils. This also collects your sharpenings meaning that you can sharpen anywhere, anytime. I'm not gonna lie to you, I sometimes use the standard metal sharpener if it's nearby, I'll just leave the sharpenings on the desk and worry about cleaning it later. I often see a lot of people questioning what paper they should be using and it really depends on what they want to do. If you are going to be sketching out some rough templates or doing something that might not be considered as serious as a complete drawing, then by all means grab some of that printer paper and get to work. But if you are going to be spending a lot of your time creating what you might consider a masterpiece, then you want to invest into something of higher quality. I draw on Bristol board which provides an excellent extra smooth white surface perfect for my detailed drawings in pencil. Whilst your average printer paper might come in at around 80 GSM, this is usually around 250 GSM. GSM refers to the substance weight of the paper. This Bristol board feels like something that would sit between cartridge paper and card. I have not used anything else since I started drawing on this. It allows me to apply a lot of pressure using the pencil and also to be very detailed without the paper creasing or warping like it would do if I was working on some standard paper. This is fairly expensive in comparison to other alternatives but I don't mind investing in something that will enable me to achieve better results in return. You get around 20 sheets in a pack so you might want to use it sparingly, I use it for my complete drawings. It's always a good feeling coming across some good quality paper. I remember in school I would always try and get into the storage rooms and find the stack of cartridge paper and well I'd just t uh, borrow some. I don't think that I have previously mentioned this pencil extender in a video before, but it's something that doesn't deserve to be overlooked. When you have been using your pencils for a while, they get to a point where it's hard to hold them, and that's when most people might throw them away. But by placing them into this pencil extender, you are able to continue getting some use out of them. Pencils can be expensive and you don't want to waste them, so I recommend investing in a simple pencil extender like this. It's an unwritten rule that every artist should own a sketchbook. It's a place where they can store all of the work which they create, in addition to those finished pieces on display. I'm not going to talk about how a sketchbook should be used, because that's entirely up to you. But here I also have a notebook that I have decided to include in this list alongside the sketchbook because, in all honesty, I find myself using this to write in more than I do my sketchbook to draw in. And that might be surprising, but I am always planning out what I need to do or I am journaling my thoughts and intentions. Whilst this might not be relevant to everyone, this is something that I do often and it helps me manage my time. I'm always open to anything that might improve my productivity or allow me to work more efficiently. I would consider myself to be a traditional artist as opposed to a digital artist, but that doesn't mean that I don't create digitally from time to time. I often add some colour to my drawings in Photoshop and to do this I use a drawing tablet. This is the Huion Inspiroy H950P. It's nothing special compared to a lot of the drawing tablets and monitors that are available right now, but it's all that's really necessary for my needs. I'm not producing anything fancy when I work digitally. I'm just applying some colour to my drawings that I create by hand, and this assists me in doing that. 
I'm probably not the guy that you want to listen to when it comes to all of this stuff, but this is what I use and I find it very useful. It includes this battery free stylus which apparently features 60 levels of tilt recognition. The tablet has 8192 levels of pressure sensitivity and overall it has a sleek design. It works fine for what I need it to do, again I'm not too experienced when it comes to these devices but I was happy with this purchase. So that is what I use to create artwork and this video was like one big advertisement for all of these products but if you are interested in purchasing any of this stuff then do consider supporting the channel by heading over to the link in the description which will take you to a page where I have listed all of the equipment and supplies that I use along with some books and some of the resources that might help you out and all of those links are affiliated with Amazon. With that being said, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, then please leave a like, subscribe with the notifications on to stay up to date. That's everything from me. I'll see you in the next one.